Hi everyone, my name is Jared Johnson with Music Compounds and uh, we're going to be focusing on drum rudiments today around the drum set and what those are and how to use them and we're going to get started shortly, I'm just waiting for a few people to get on before I get started and then we'll get started. So, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Um, once again, my name is Jared Johnson. I work at a Music Compound in Sarasota, Florida. And uh, we have been doing these Facebook Live sessions um, where you can kind of tune in and just get some ideas for playing uh, if you're sitting around the house bored in quarantine and uh, trying to figure out some new stuff to work on. Uh, we also have our private lessons going on right now. Still, we're just doing virtual lessons and everything, so keep that in mind if you have someone who's uh, interested in learning. Um, we are still doing private lessons. We still are working with our bands who uh, perform in the community as well. Unfortunately, they can't perform live right now, so we're working on just like building up our repertoires and that kind of thing. And uh, we do actually have bands who are going to be performing at Music Compound virtually. Um, I think three times a week, I want to say Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Friday nights, I believe. Or maybe it's Saturday nights, I think it's their Friday. But um, so please check all that out on our Facebook page. So uh, today's session is going to be just about uh, drum rudiments, what those are, um, how to use them around the drum set, and that they're you know kind of seeing that they're not just boring patterns that you kind of learn if you're in like a middle school band or something like that, and then you kind of just play them a little bit and then you forget about them, or you get really good at them if you're in like a marching band or something like that, but otherwise you're not really going to use it. That's uh, not the case at all. I think a lot of people are starting to realize that more and more now, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, but uh, let's start out with. Uh, this one, because I was like, kind of going through and there's so many that I wanted to share that I like to use on the drum kit, um, I thought we could just kind of start out with the basics and we'll probably do another session next week um, with more advanced rudiments. Um, but the most basic one that everyone should probably already know, and if you're playing drums at all, you should already know this, um, it's a single stroke roll. And so a lot of times it's written out as 30 second notes or you can think of it as 16th notes, but you really don't have to know what any of that means. All you need to know is that you're just simply playing right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, or left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Um, and 
time. So it can be groupings of two or four or eight or whatever. It doesn't really matter uh, too much. Um, but obviously you're gonna wanna practice playing these in time. So um, with all of these, I would say it can be a little bit dry sometimes, but practice these with a metronome, you know? Um, try different variations and make sure that you're lining up in time with it. Um, also record yourself playing and kind of play it back and uh, see if you sound like you're playing in time with the metronome. Um, if you really want to be like certain that you're playing evenly and just really listen when you are playing and make sure that you're lining up with the metronome or if you're not playing to a metronome but you're lining up with the underlying pulse of the music or whatever so um, yeah so let's just start out with that and then when we're doing this we want to make sure you know the usual typical good rules of like good technique and everything um, we want to make sure our stick heights are the same so our sticks should be coming up at about the same height um, otherwise we're gonna probably get a little bit different uh, sound on each side. We're always striving to have like even sound for the most part. Of course, down the road we can kind of switch that up and maybe purposely make one louder than the other for you know different musical applications. But generally speaking, we want to practice these with the same volume, the same force. Um, so stick height is really kind of important with maintaining that. And you want to kind of keep like a loose feel. We don't want to be death gripping the sticks or like <laughs> digging the sticks into the head because we're so tight trying to go really fast that. We're kind of slowing ourselves down with all that tension. So um, it's just really about being patient, I think, with yourself. Um, everybody gets faster as they go on. You know, they may not sit down and practice drills all the time, but over time, just playing a lot, you're gonna get faster between doing, you know, fills where you're just trying to get that one fill down um, or whatever, but you will get faster at it. But if you're willing to sit down and really practice with a metronome, you will get faster, faster. Um, so. straightforward. I'm sure if you've been playing drums at all, you've probably practiced that. Maybe the first thing you ever learned. Um, so, I mean, honestly, if I was going to practice to a metronome, for the most part, I would put on, you know, let's say this is your metronome speed, around like 60 beats a minute or so, maybe a little bit slower even, and just practice 16th notes probably. So, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. practice the same thing leading with your left hand or if you were doing left before then switch to your right that way you don't get too locked into always leading with your with one hand or the other your dominant hand probably so so that's good and then honestly just move up in little speeds at a time maybe if you go start out at 60 beats a minute go to 65 or maybe 70 and do the same thing just keep on going until it starts to kind of get to where maybe you're not uh holding it together as well as you could so and then kind of work through that but otherwise um, just finding songs where you're going to be playing certain things if you don't like the whole metronome approach an alternative way is to find songs that play faster music where you're going to have to do faster fills with faster singles um, and do it that way so let's talk about how to also make it a little more interesting and maybe not just always play on a drum pad or on a snare drum um, you can practice you know doing this with moving around the toms um, and that kind of thing so you know simple drum fills that we can do That's just right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. And you can play that as a fill. Play with the beat. And you can do that and then keep on speeding it up as well. Um, you can also just loop it. So doing different variations of slower singles and faster ones. It's also a great way to get, you know, much more interesting phrasing in there, still using a single stroke roll, so to speak. So um, it doesn't always have to be the same speed. So. There I'm just doing four 
slower, faster notes and two slower ones. One, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two. One, two, three, four, one, two. One, two, three, four, one, two. Um, that's the opposite. Slow, slow, fast, 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 fast. One, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four. So there's an infinite number of combinations of what you can do with that. And real briefly, I want to also talk about, so pretty much all the examples I've done so far have been uh, groupings of four um, or even number groupings. So it's also great to practice um, triplets. So um, I think some people think they're a little more daunting than they really are. It's just important that you kind of get used to them. Uh, there's actually a lot of music that we listen to that's you know based in six eight that's still groupings of three so it's not that weird or that strange it shouldn't be that daunting to you know start learning triplets and learning to feel them properly so I think it's great to start doing that early on that can be a little bit tricky though because what we end up doing with a single stroke roll if we're playing triplets is we're kind of switching lead hands so if I'm playing sixteen does I'm going one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four that right hand is always landing with my metronome or my hi-hat in this case, right? So it's, it's landing on that underlying pulse. So we're kind of like just getting used to having our, whatever our dominant hand is or whatever hand we're starting with, you know, locked in with that underlying pulse. When we're playing odd groupings, you're gonna be switching hands every time, basically. Um, so, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So, and a lot of people find it's, it's pretty helpful early on to Make sure you accent, just play louder that one note, which you'll notice I'm doing now. I'm kind of like lifting up my stick really high on that first note. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. So it kind of helps us um, lock in with whatever our pulse is. So I definitely recommend when you're doing this, try to like really emphasize that one and the one, two, three. So in this case, one, two, three, one, two. challenging at first because we're switching lead hands every time we play that but it's also one of the things that makes it pretty neat um, when we start to move around the drum kit you can come up with a lot of different stuff um, you can start on for example a floor tom for the first hit and then two three will be on the snare drum I'm gonna do the same thing leading with my left hand tom hit two three so one two three one two three one two three one two three the biggest trick here is you really have to be your own kind of a teacher in that you have to really kind of watch yourself and make sure am I doing right, left, right, left, right, left. Because oftentimes when we start to do something like this, uh, if we're not experienced, you know, we, uh, we kind of start to do right, right, left, right, right, left, or any combination of that, two lefts in a row, two rights in a row. So we have to always remember to switch hands here um, until we're really used to it and you, don't, you won't have to think about it anymore, it'll become automatic. But. speed it up it can be pretty cool you can also play it doesn't have to be you know one here and two here it can be one here two here a mixture of the two single stroke stuff for today at least um, and then I also wanted to talk about double strokes so um, I think a lot of people have kind of you know if they're newer they maybe heard this or kind of know something cool is going on but they don't really know what it is I think also a lot of the old-school teaching for double strokes um, 
kind of frustrates me to a certain extent. I think it's good to practice a little bit this way. Um, well, I think the traditional way of teaching is kind of, you know, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. And it's true that that's what you're supposed to play. Um, you're supposed to play two rights, two lefts, back and forth, right? If you're doing just like a double stroke, long roll, okay? Um, and that is what they typically call that rudiment, a long roll, where you're just continuously doing double strokes. So right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, et cetera. Or left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right. Um, but I think the way it's taught usually is kind of frustrating because they're kind of having you do two singles in a row each time. And then you're just supposed to do that to the end of time when you finally figure out on your own, your body figures out how to do that with a rebound. And so what I mean by that is, you know, really a double stroke should be, I'm dropping my stick one time, and then it's just bouncing off the head. There's a lot of energy from just that first initial drop um, with the tension of the head and the, you know, the stick and everything. So um, all that energy goes back into the stick, lifts it back up, and I don't really have to do that much extra work. I can get you know, 10, 12 hits just from letting it bounce one time. Um, just from dropping my stick once. So when you really get this down, you can do it slowly like that, but at the beginning, more than likely to actually do it evenly. At this speed, it can be a little bit challenging, and more importantly, we all want to go at the beginning anyway. So um, instead of, I mean, I think it's good to practice going right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, a little bit, um, but I think it's more valuable to just work on in your rebound and at some point we'll probably do a whole video on just how to learn how to do doubles so what I usually teach is I have kids start playing learning how to get the stick to bounce pretty fast get to buzzing we're doing a multi bounce roll another rudiment that's where I'm having the stick bounce like you know probably I have no idea how many times exactly if you can count that fast let me know how many exactly but let's say 10 or 12, um, with each stick drop. So I have them start out with one of those, and then without changing the speed of their hands, kind of back off on the pressure that you're using to get that kind of really fast buzz, and then kind of gradually back out into double strokes. So we're gonna do a whole, whole lesson on that probably at some point, but I don't wanna dig into all that. Basically, once you've started using a double stroke roll though, and you can kind of do it, um, even if you can't really get it with rebound yet, you can still practice, you know. And play double strokes. To a certain extent, at least get used to the, the, the fact that the timing is just your right hand and your left hand is different from singles. So, um, but it's good to practice that even. So, but once you start getting rebound, you can really start to move them around the drum set, play them on the hi-hat even. Okay, so there's a lot of different neat stuff that we can do. Um, now one thing with doubles is they do kind of, it's a little bit tricky when you're first learning them, uh, even once you get them down, to get them where you can like kind of play them on surfaces with less rebound, like a floor tom, for example. And so uh, at some point we'll go into, you know, uh, also a different technique, adding a little extra snap at the end of your double to get a little more. So you can actually play doubles on a floor tom. But for now, double strokes. Um, and then I wanted to talk about, oh, also real briefly, you can even do doubles on your bass drum as well, whether or not you have a double kick drum pedal. If you have a double bass drum pedal, you know, you can just play right, left, and then do doubles, but honestly, you can do a double with just one foot. And then at that point, useful thing in the world when we have two uh, other limbs we can really use but it can be kind of cool and it's kind of useful depending on how you mix it up with other techniques so um, it's still definitely a good thing to have in the, in the tool bag as it were so um, I think that covers a lot of doubles the last thing I want to talk about is mixing up um, the doubles and the singles that we've gone over so far um, 
So the most common ones you're probably going to think of if you are already well along in drumming or you know some of this already would be paradiddles, okay? And then some of the short rolls, um, five strokes, six strokes, seven strokes, nine strokes, yada, yada, yada. So also stuff like drag rudiments, um, paradiddle diddles, yada, yada, yada. But we'll talk about more of those advanced ones next week. I want to talk about just a couple. I would say the paradiddle is a great one to learn right off the bat. A lot of people have already practiced that one. Um, and so we're gonna talk about the paradiddle and we're also gonna talk about the six stroke roll. I use those all the time in my playing. There's a lot of really cool beats I think uh, I've discovered, been taught, uh, watch videos on YouTube with people playing. Some really, really neat beats um, that are based in these two uh, rudiments. Um, so I wanted to kind of talk about the rudiments themselves and then some of those beat examples and fill ideas and yada, yada, yada. So um, let's talk about the paradiddle first of all. So paradiddle is just, um, Basically, I like to think about it in a way where I don't really have to memorize the sticking, although it's not exactly rocket science to do so. A pair, para, so a pair of sticks, right, left, or left, right, and then a diddle. So in drum speak, uh, diddle just means double, the double stroke rolls we were talking about. So a double, right, right, or left, left is also a diddle, okay? So we have a pair of singles and then a diddle. So you're going to have right, left for the pair, and then right, right, or left, right, and then left, left. So, um, obviously on the pair we have to make sure we switch sides, and then whichever uh, side we started on, that's the side we want to do the double on, okay? So it's you know, right, left, I started on the right, so I'll do the double on that side. Left, right, started on the left, I'll do the double on that side. Um, now, we want to actually keep all of these even though, so it's not like a, an inverted drag kind of thing where... We actually want to keep them all nice and straight. So typically, these are you know we're playing these as 16th notes or maybe 32nd notes. Um, so it would be right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, 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 left, left. And now the last thing we want to do for a traditional good paradiddle is to accent the first um, hit of each paradiddle. So if you're starting on the right side, right, left, right, right, and then the left side, left. Right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. So for people who are, you know, very much into like the uh, kind of very strict rudimental drumming, you know, they want like very high like accent strokes and pretty small like everything else. So loud, soft, soft. There's a good reason for that. Like when you get into that rhythm, it really helps with speed down the road. So the paradiddles are great. Um, it's more than just a sticking pattern. I mean, it's kind of like a the steel, you know, Jojo Myers words. It's basically like a simple melody. Um, There's a simple melody that already makes it pretty musical and interesting, um, maybe more so than just playing single strokes, you know? So, um, and then we can use them in fills, you know? We can play paradiddles there. Um, we can use them in beats. So let's talk about maybe how to play a, a beat real quickly. Just literally, all I'm doing there is taking the right hand, putting it on the hi-hat, left hand's on the snare drum, and play the same pattern. Now with this one, I'm kind of, to a certain extent, I am accenting the first of each side, um, especially because that's kind of my back beat on the snare drum. That second one on the left hand, that's like where I normally would put a snare drum in a regular beat. 
one reason but also I'm kind of making my hi-hat largely louder um, than the left hand that way they kind of blend a little bit more to get this kind of cool textural thing um, where I'm not kind of just overpowering with all loud snare drum hits so it does take a little bit of finesse to get this one sounding um, pretty good just keep in mind loud on that you know the accent of the, the left hand that the first one and then all the other hits should be quieter the double so for my bass drum here is putting it with the, um, the first right hit so you can think of that like your accent as well um, on the right handed pair it'll so right, 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 right. it's really simple you can do it just that way and you have a great sounding beat you can also play a regular rock maybe you want You can also actually, there's plenty of other things you can do with your bass drum. One really awesome thing, I think James Renato taught me this, thank you James, um, was to match your right foot with your right hand. So, um, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left. So every time I hit with my right stick on the hi-hat or if I'm moving it around, um, whatever, um, the bass drum is going to match with that right hand. pretty well I think. Um, we'll go over like paradiddle diddles and double paradiddles and inverted paradiddles and stuff like that I think maybe next time. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about was the six stroke roll. Um, and actually one more thing on the paradiddles. One thing I really love doing is putting the accents on crashes with bass drum. So roll. six stroke roll so uh, the six stroke roll there's definitely variations on it but basically obviously we're gonna hit six times but it's essentially a single two doubles and then a single all right so you typically either right left left right right left or left right right left left right just think about starting on one side going to the other side with the double other side with a double and then ending on a single on the opposite side of what you started um, so with this rudiment, unlike the paradiddle, you're not going to switch sides when you accent. Um, you're going to actually stay on the same side. So right, left, right, right, left, right, sorry, right, left, left, right, right, left, right, um, And so I definitely recommend playing this one with a metronome and getting used to that. Uh, right stick or whichever one you're starting with um, landing on the, the quarter note uh, for now. So just to get used to it, because a lot of people end up when they hear this after a while, you start to hear da da diga diga da da diga diga, which is a variation on the six stroke roll. And in some ways, it's really not any different. It's just kind of where we're perceiving the down beat to be within that six stroke roll. So, um, you know, get a metronome going. as doubles and then another eighth note. Um, personally one of my favorite ways is to actually take that 
rudiment and make it triplets. So it's all the same rhythm. There's not like a slow, fast, 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 slow, slow, fast, fast, fast. So we don't have that variation. Instead, it's just all one rhythm. So think uh, 16th note triplets, really. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And also, I guess I skipped ahead a little bit. Um, traditionally, with, uh, with this, you want to make sure you're accenting the first single and the last single. So. so that first one and the last one should be loud. Um, same thing with the triplet version. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. Um, so those are really great. They flow really nicely. Um, they have this great kind of feel to them when you're playing them as well. And you can really kind of like, you know, crash on the beginning of one, go to a tom. triplet beats that are just based in the six stroke roll. So you've got single strokes, make sure you play them as 16th notes, groupings of four, whatever, um, as well as groupings of three. Uh, practice, you know, accenting different variations, try doing faster singles and slower ones mixed together. Um, yeah, uh, the double stroke roll. Um, definitely check out a video in the future from me, but there's plenty of videos online as well that you can check out of how to do a double stroke roll. If you need a little help with that, really get into where you're doing rebound. Um, and then work on your paradiddles and six stroke rolls. And I will say one of the best things you can do, if you really want to get to where you can play these fast, I didn't just, you know, kind of start playing them when I was like 12 and then oh, I just never had to practice them and I've just gotten to where I can play them fast. Um, I still could clean up a lot of my rudiments. Uh, sometimes when I move them around the kit, I could really spend more time getting just every single note perfectly, the right dynamics and everything. Um, but I also did just spend time with a metronome and I still do where I just put on a metronome really slowly and uh, play these rudiments like kind of painfully slow and just go up a little bit in speed and do the same thing. And I get, I spend a good 10 minutes working on the same rudiment. Um, and so I'm playing it as fast as I can. And the next, you know, next day or a day later, a couple days later, I try to do the same thing, but push it a little bit further in speed. Um, and that kind of thing or power or whatever it is. So, um, if you really want to get to these where you can just like, you know, fly around the kit and like play all this stuff, um, really fast, you're going to have to at some point probably sit down and just set some time aside for just playing it really well with the metronome, especially if you want it to all land in time and be able to play it, you know, as a fill or as a sweet drum solo or something like that. So, um, 
you know, don't be afraid to like spend some time, sit down and just chill out with a metronome and a drum pad and some TV show you've seen a million times. So you don't have to focus on it. Just put it on the background and just drill things out on the pad or whatever. So, um, also thank you to Music Compound for having me on. Once again, my name is Jared Johnson. I'm a, a drum instructor at Music Compound in Sarasota, Florida. Um, we do have our virtual lessons going on right now. We have bands performing at our space. They're kind of just performing virtually. Um, they're the only people there just kind of performing on our stage right now. We're letting them use our stage for free and we're super great or super lucky to have them and we're, we're grateful to be able to help the community um, and provide that space for these uh, band members and these bands to come play. Um, obviously they can't perform out right now so that's a big loss of income so uh, when they're on there performing I know you can get connected with them and actually donate money to them uh, you know kind of pay them for the performance they're putting on so please uh, support them uh, when all this gets resolved of course we want to be able to go listen to bands so um, Hopefully we can support that community and uh, check out those shows. Please check out the other instructor shows on Facebook Live. We have a lot of great stuff going on. Um, and we do have virtual lessons going on. So if you know someone who's interested in a lesson, uh, have them contact Music Compound. Uh, thanks so much. Have a good one.